What's an experience you don't ever want to go through again? When my children were young, there was a co-worker friend of my wife who became a de facto aunt to my children, and sister to my wife and I. She was single, and most of her family, whom she didn't get along with, lived hours away. We lived near my wife's family, and they all treated her, as if she were one of us. One spring, she had been fighting a bad cold mild flu. As with most teachers, she worked multiple jobs. Her second job, at that time, was working at the Hallmark store in the mall. Early one evening, I answered the phone. We had a landline back then, and a young woman asked for my wife. I could tell the girl was upset. My wife got on another phone, and I listened in curious to why the girl was upset. She said she worked at the Hallmark with our friend. Our friend wasn't feeling well, and went into the bathroom. After about 30 to 45 minutes, the girl on the phone thought she'd go check on our friend. There was no response from the knock. The girl got the key and opened the bathroom door to find our friend, in her early 30s, dead on the toilet. The paramedics were called, but they couldn't revive her. The girl didn't know if our friend had family nearby, but she knew my wife was good friends with this woman and looked up our number in the phone book. The girl was understandably upset, and the news made me very sad, but the noise my wife made chilled me to the bone, made me sick to my stomach, and got me started crying. Nearly 20 years later, my stomach still rolls recalling my wife's sandwiched cry. I never want to hear that again. It turns out our friend had a fast growing tumor in her abdomen, that was slowly squeezing off the blood supply to her internal organs. What she thought, was a flu with her organs slowly starving and shutting down. My dad dying suddenly in the middle of the school year. I didn't want to live anymore. It's hard to get up in the morning. My dad died almost two years ago at the end of my semester. I haven't recovered yet. I started terrify. It doesn't get better. I miss him every day. And I feel empty. He used to wake me up every day. I feel for you. Get help. It may not get better soon. But it may give you hope. Take care. Taking our 5 day old son to the earth because he started having labored breathing and would not nurse. I handed him to the nurse and she took off running and calling for a crash cart. I'm no doctor, but I knew what that meant. He was revived, and we were given his diagnosis of hypoplastic left heart syndrome, HLHS. His left ventricle failed to form. Six open heart surgeries, and one transplant later he is now 17. Waking up to find my husband dead on the couch. He was only 26, as was I, and I was absolutely devastated. I found my wife, 35 at the time, dead in the bathroom, not suicide. Just a couple years before that, her younger sister was killed in a car accident. Sorry for your loss. I found my boyfriend of 5 years and father to our 4 year old daughter dead on the couch December 22, 2018. I still don't remember a thing from that morning. The doctor said my brain just blocked it out. I'm sorry for your loss. There's no pain like losing your significant other. Four months ago I had to tell the doctor to turn off my husband's life support. Then I lay with my head on his chest as he took his final breath. I never want to be faced with that again. Even though I was 100% certain it was right. Appendicitis sucks as soon as my surgery was done i had the stomach bug worst experience by far being stuck in a mental hospital it's not like in the movies but it's the feeling of being so close to freedom yet so far away yes i was in a general unit most everyone was nice but there was like two or three hour of like 10 that gave me a weird vibe one being my roommate i hated it there was nothing to do except take pills and talk in group the day I knew I was getting out, my mom came to get me. She had to wait 3 hours in the parking lot. When I asked what time I was leaving they kept saying, when your ride gets here you mm I called my mom over an hour ago, and she's been sitting outside waiting. Waking up to my mother screaming and crying, after finding out my oldest sister had passed away from internal bleeding, and complications with her liver. All I heard, as soon as I woke up were the howling cries of my mom. I thought it hurt to see her cry, but when she cried like this, I lost it internally. Man I remember my mom screaming and trying to revive my dad in their bed. I woke up, 
and thought they were having a fight, and I wandered into the bedroom, mine and Thas was connected by a smallish hallway, and saw my dad kind of flipping around and vibrating, kind of like a fish out of water. I couldn't move, it felt like weights were just attached to my feet, seeing his face twitching, and the whites of his eyes. The sound I'll never forget, and god forbid I have to hear it again, I'd rather just die. Just typing this out makes me feel shaky and lightheaded. I was 12 when this happened 5 days after Christmas, he died of congestive heart failure. I hope 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 I never have to go through that again. I can't hardly stand Christmas New Year's anymore because of it. I have at least one night terror or severe panic attack a year. TLDR I totally feel losing it internally. Your experience just makes me kind of relate in some way. I hope you're doing okay. Watching both my parents waste away from degenerative diseases, manuscript and Alzheimer's. My dad passed when I was 17 and my mom was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's just after my 19th birthday. She was gone long before in mind, but her body and spirit held around for another 11 years. I didn't get to say goodbye to my dad, but I got to tell my mom that I had everything and I was going to be okay. After my mom passed her sister tried to steal my inheritance away from myself and my sister. We are still battling legally, and I hope she rots from the inside out. Both sides of my entire family abandoning myself and my sister through all these times, and then trying to enter back into our lives after the fires went down, through no help of family. I basically never want to experience my family ever again. Anyone who says blood is thicker than water only serves to use that to their advantage. My mom has end stage breast cancer, and watching her health and spirit deteriorate is the most painful experience I've ever known. I'm so very sorry for you and your mom. I had surgery, chemo, and radiation this year for breast cancer and it sucked, but I'm thankful it's an option for me, and I'm still here. My heart goes out to you. Truly. Living paycheck to paycheck. I'm in a comfortable position now, and don't need to worry about bills, or if I can eat that day. The death of my parents. This was years ago. My mom was 62, and died of a heart attack. I will never forget seeing my mom dead on the operating table. Drive. Let us go in, and pay our respects right after she passed. My dad was a heavy smoker, and died several years later of emphysema. I was in the emergency room, when my dad took his last labored breaths. He fought to breath for several days before he passed. It's because of him, that I don't touch 6 vape. Watching him in oxygen the last year or so, and continuing to smoke, was brutal. Dislocating my shoulder, while standing on a ladder, and flailing wildly, because holy duck my shoulders popped out. I dislocated my kneecap once. It happened a lot with my sister, so I knew I could pop it back in and I did. Afterwards it felt like a bad sprain. But those few seconds when the kneecap was in the wrong position, it's hard to describe. I don't remember any pain, but it was the most horrible feeling of panic and horror when something is just not where it's supposed to be. I think more than a few seconds would have driven me insane. How did you stand it? You've just reminded me of an incident at school years ago, all playing rugby, and we dive on top of this lad who had the ball. He was screaming get off, get off. But in a sort of jokey way, like half laughing as he said it. We all got off one by one, and when he was revealed to us all, it appeared that his kneecap was facing the opposite direction. It was only then, when he noticed too, that he began to scream bloody murder. Still remember how loud the noise was when they popped it back in for him haha. <laughs> the feeling of abandonment when one of my parents ducked off to go party, do drugs and be a complete douche and never call for 12 years. Pretty convenient to reconnect when I'm an adult and all the hard work is over. I feel you. My mom is turning 50 soon and couch surfs and calls me for money pretty much quarterly at this point. I've never given her a cent. She left when I was 10. Now 12 years later, when I have a career it's super convenient for her to suddenly get a phone and try reconnecting. Good on you for saying no. There are so many people who are incapable of caring about anyone else's needs. But man can they cry some good almost convincing crocodile tears when there's something they want from you. People do change, but it's rare. Certainly much rarer than people pretending they've changed in order to manipulate others. 
this is nothing compared to others, but I'd have to say getting potassium put into your body through and forth. That sheet burns like nothing else. I'm a type 1 diabetic, and have gone DKA a few times, and part of the recovery in the hospital, is that they have to give you potassium as insulin apparently can lower it. It may be a horse pill, but always ask for it in pill form, if at all possible. You can even ask to have the pills cut in half, and for some applesauce to get them down. I had to have emergency surgery, to stop the blood loss I was experiencing. I lost enough blood, that they did two transfusions and a potassium drip afterwards. I woke up at 2am screaming for someone to help. The nurse ran in, and had to hold me down, to keep me from ripping the fourth out. The only vein I had open was on the side of my wrist, so it felt like my elbow had been lit on fire. They tried to lower it, but it was still too much. They just gave up, and gave me the horse pills instead. Never again. My house burning to the ground. Losing the only place I've ever called home. Losing all my belongings. Losing everything. But that wasn't what hit me the most. What hit me the most was standing there watching my house fully engulfed in flames. And knowing there is absolutely ducking nothing I could do to help. That was the worst feeling of my life. Edit for everyone asking. It started as a grease fire. Edit 2. Holy crap this has blown up. For everyone wondering. It was inevitable. No it wasn't water on a grease fire. <laughs> Losing everything in a natural disaster. I worked many hours, used to pile up as much overtime as I could, and had a lot of things. Poof, all of those years wasted. I went into deep depression and hid in World of Warcraft, because why bother starting over from scratch? While I'm over it, every now and then I'll see something, and think in my head oh I have. Had one like that. I hate that back quote had feeling. I've spent my entire adulthood as a hobby mechanic working in my own cars and toys. This spring some addicts stole my tool chest and everything I had in the garage. I got a few items recovered, and a person charged. But I'm still missing all the main tools of value. About dollar sign 6 dash 7k. Now every time I go to work on a car I can't even start the project without going to where my toolbox was before my mind says back quote oh duck I had a toolbox. Then I get angry and don't even want to do the project. I feel like they not only stole my tools, but also the enjoyment I got out of tinkering in the garage. Makes me feel kinda lost as it was my main hobby. Finding my wife dead in our bed one morning about a year ago edit. Thank you all so much for your kind words. You know when we look at all the hubris in Washington and London and HK and Syria it's hard sometimes to remember that we are all human beings and definitely mortal. To help heal I wrote a little poem. If you please I'd like to share it with you. Thank you again, kind strangers. Together we can make the world a better place. My little murder mittens Kenny helped me through a lot, but I had to let him go about 6 months later too. Life goes on, be strong. Life's sacred fabric oft cut from profane cloth. So we weave our tomorrows with threads of hope I am the needle and textile of my own creation dancing with a promise that gleams as my fingers flicker in warp and weft I am the tailor of my own suit of being. <laughs> Sitting with my wife as we get, told that she had cancer. The drive home was so quiet. The next day, we got a phone call to say that it wasn't cancer, just a benign mass. The relief was palpable. The following day getting another call saying that the initial diagnosis was correct and that it indeed was cancer. I cannot put into words the feeling of that gut kick from the low high low. Fast forward 14 years, one major surgery, a year of scorched earth chemo later and yearly checkups, and I'm blessed to be able to say that my wife is healthy and cancer free. F you cancer and the horse you rode in on. That feeling when the doctors took away my baby to perform open heart surgery on her. It was after hours and hours of waiting and struggling to keep her calm without food or rest, but the emotions that flooded me when they took her were the worst of my life. It fills me with dread and panic and terror just thinking about it. I wish she wasn't at school right now. I need to give her a hug. I had my right testicle removed on my second wedding anniversary. Two weeks prior to that I was diagnosed with testicular cancer after I had gone into the doctor because my testicle was the size of a tennis ball and rock hard. I could go without that whole ordeal again. 
pulling up by the building, and seeing my cancer ridden dad's body on the pavement. He jumped 7 stories. He was in his pyjamas. I had to wait by his lifeless body for 5 hours, while the cops and the CSI, and then the ambulance came to take him. The resident came in, and took a chair, asked if I wanted my parents, to leave the room for the conversation. I said it was fine that they stay. She then told me my two and a half year old had leukemia. I wouldn't wish he'd last year on anyone. Duck childhood cancer. Edit. Wow. This really took off while I was out trick or treating. Thank you for the awards. Concern and well wishes. He is in remission and doing well. Though he still has another two and a half years of treatment ahead of him before he rings the bell. His protocol is long. He's pretty traumatized from all the shit he went through, which has been pretty hard, but we are working on it, and to be fair, we are pretty traumatized too. He's scared of change, and strangers and needs a lot more hugs than he did before, but he's still a little badass. Here he is ready to head out trick or treating Inga. Compton KL.